I want to say aloha to this special edition of the TRF newsletter. I'm here in Hawaii, in Hilo, Hawaii, with Lorraine Friedel. She's going to be presenting at the Trauma Conference in May, and I just wanted you to have a chance to see her incredible studio where she works and to learn a little bit about Santre. We have this incredible array behind us, and maybe not everyone who's coming to the conference has heard about Santre therapy or knows what it is at all. Mm -hmm. So we have before us the Santre and all the figurines, and I would love for you to explain something about where it comes from mm -hmm. and how you got into it. Yeah, so in, in sand play, we use uh, sand and we use images in the form of miniatures and we offer water, uh, candles, uh, fire. And so you're actually using the, the natural element, which is uh, you know touching the earth itself. So it's kind of a privilege to be able to do this work because you're touching the earth right away. Uh, and so it connects us to our bodies. Uh, and Sam play originated in Switzerland uh, by Dora Kolf, who is a Swiss analyst. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was uh, good friends with Carl Jung. And this is where the families knew each other. And this is where uh, she was working with children. And he asked her to go study with Margaret Lowenfeld in England, where Margaret Lowenfeld was using sand and miniatures with children. Uh, and she added the Jungian component. And so her method involves uh, playing with the sand, uh, images, uh, it's Buddhism roots in terms of meditation mm -hmm. and play, and it's non-directive and non-interfering. And that's a big defining piece of sand play is that the therapist holds the space, but it becomes a place where somebody can tell their story. Wow, wow. And we did a little sand tray last night and it has a very dreamlike quality. So mm -hmm. is that a connection also with the young therapy is the dreamlike? Well, yeah, so you get to enter this space and, and, and bring forth whatever the unconscious wants to come forward, right? Mm -hmm. So you're looking at these images and we always say, just whatever calls you, let it come into the tray. And so people will suddenly look at something that maybe it's, it doesn't like, ooh, that's kind of odd or maybe they'll look at something that they just can't stop looking at and it'll trigger a memory or something in their lives. And so the tray starts to make itself. And the connection is that whatever's inside can, can be seen yeah. and worked with. And so it's very confrontive because sometimes what's hidden deep in the recesses of our being shows up and then we have to see it and deal with it mm -hmm. and integrate it. Yeah, so it's very powerful. Uh, but it's not talking, and so we don't have to use words, which is a big part of sand plays, that we just let image, our brains are image-making organs, and so we just use images and let things come forward uh, and then sit with it. Yeah. So it's like a lucid dream that you can see when you're awake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A waking yeah. dream and it's alive. Uh, it correlates well with uh, Jung's active imagination. So you can just uh, be alive and with your imagination. So some people come to do sand play to become more creative, uh, to get in touch with their creative self, to open up energy for healing uh, and change, as well as uh, healing uh, deep wounds and childhood. And, and so you're coming to the trauma conference with mm -hmm. Sandra, and you also teach a presentation for the certificate program. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering what's the connection between the Sandra work and trauma healing? Well, sand play is a very natural uh, modality for people who've been traumatized, who've experienced trauma because it doesn't rely on words. Mm -hmm. And many times people don't know, it's, it's trapped in the body, they don't have access except through you know, sudden memories or flashbacks or the sensations. Um, and so in sand play, they can create little by little what's going on, not, not realizing what's happening, but just letting things come forward in a way that's safe that nobody's telling them what to do. Uh, and so I say, you know, make whatever you like. Uh, often the trauma story comes out, uh, but it comes out in pieces, mm -hmm. and then they put the pieces together over time. Uh, and so in sound play, you're not just connecting to your own story. You begin to connect to the story of your people um, and stories of your culture and your land, intergenerational things come out all in, from the unconscious. 
Uh, and it's quite magical uh, and intense. It can be very intense. So I know from psychodrama, when we start, we often start with what the story that we consider the thing that happened or the fact. And imagination comes into play when we imagine what could be the possible thing that we would change that could heal what happened. And, and does a similar thing happen in the sand tray? I mean, do people have the agency to change things when they're... Yeah, so when you're creating a sand uh, play scene, there's the initial hook, you know, <laughs> something grabs us. And so we don't usually start with an intention, although some people do on their way to the session, they'll be thinking, oh, I'm gonna make this, or I'm gonna make that. But when they get here, whatever needs to be made comes uh -huh. forward, right? So we might think with our head one thing, but then our heart or our body will pull us in a different direction. Yeah. And then we sit with what we made. And so as you're using all of your senses and, and all parts of the brain and connection, then you start to reorganize. You put this here and you realize, oh, that doesn't go in there. This needs to be closer here. And so they reorganize. They're actively working on reorganizing inside mm -hmm. through the, the work that yeah. they see. Yeah. Yeah. So please tell us a little bit about the workshop that you're going to be doing. Yeah, so I'll be doing a, a workshop called Stories in the Sand. Uh, and we'll be looking at psychocultural factors to healing when communities are in crisis. And I'll be pulling on the work we did in 2018 when Kilauea erupted uh, and so many people were displaced without a home. Uh, and we brought sand play, mobile sand play to the shelter. Uh, and also the work of people since the pandemic that have been coming and doing sand play and connecting uh, to themselves and to this, this place. Uh, we live in Hawaii. And so many of the stories will be related to the Hawaiian culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so psychocultural factors uh, that I'll be highlighting have to do with the, this organic nature that we have, that we want to become in balance and we're organically designed to become in balance. Mm -hmm. but, but because of trauma, we might disrupt that or we might not have access to those energies that can come in harmony and wholeness. And so in sand play with trauma, uh, we tap into the natural capacities to bring balance. So I'll be present uh, relationally, very important, uh, just like an attachment relationship. Yeah. Uh, in sand play, I'm, I'm aware of my body, what's happening, what I'm picking up from the other person so that I can support them in going places that they might, it might be a risk or a challenge for them. Uh, and then little by little, they put the story together uh, and it comes into balance. So just like a hero's journey, um, no matter who you are, uh, you know, there are stories of us having to leave what's familiar, go someplace that's not familiar, that's scary, uh, make a change. Sometimes there's a huge death that happens. Uh, we've had those experiences if we've lived long enough in our own lives where um, you know, you think everything's perfect and going just right, and then everything in Hawaiian we say huli, that everything is upside down, and we're on our knees. And so in sand play, we can go to those places and become whole again. Mm -hmm. And you see a pattern over a series of trays where people can little by little uh, join the opposites, parts of themselves that they haven't claimed. Uh, so unrealized potential uh, is there. Uh, so many times when people do sand play, they will go to a place where, oh my gosh, I haven't thought I could do this. I could be a dancer. I don't have to be this, wow. you know, wow. I can do this thing that I've been denying myself. Yeah, wow. makes me want to do another tray. <laughs> yeah, there you go, anytime. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the neuropsych piece. Um, I can tell you a little story about yeah, that. Yeah, you know. just tell us what is neuropsych even? And so neuropsychology, the way I define it, is the relationship between our brain and our being and how they work in concert together. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. So the physical organ and the spiritual psychological being uh, working together. And we see that uh, unfold. Um, so when we work in the sand, we, we activate the senses. And I did some research with folks with traumatic brain injury. And they taught me yeah. uh, this process that we term the neurosensory feedback loop. So they would touch the sand. Touch the sand. Is that okay? And yes. And then something would get activated. Sometimes crying, um, disturbing sensations in their gut, mm -hmm. um, an idea, 
and then they would go to the shelves and get something. And so it was through the senses that we learned that they would get in touch with themselves. Right. But verbally, they were spinning, they were being perseverative, they would have the same conversations and they couldn't penetrate to their being. But when given the opportunity to touch, to see, to go to preserve brain functioning, the deeper self, they could access who they wanted to be. Wow. And so it was quite beautiful. And over and over again, this happens where we touch the sand, we see the images, we get in touch with emotion, and then thought, it's bottom up, and the thoughts new ideas and over and over with a therapist there of course yeah yeah just to be uh, the container for what's happening and the witness for what's happening no we cannot develop but we we develop in the context of relationship mm -hmm. and so often people say oh well can't i just get a sandbox and go home and do some meditation right yeah but it's contained in a relationship i mean the brain develops in relationship we develop as humans in relationship. It was very powerful to have you here when we were doing our sand trays. Mm -hmm. I, and I could feel your emotional resonance with each thing that I selected. Mm -hmm. it, it, that was that was really wonderful. Yeah. And it, it was touching for me and to go through those just you know, undulations and, and oh, you know, the end of it. And, and the process of going to the shelves and just seeing everything, it's like a, a listening experience where you're listening to yourself while you're seeing something. So there's a relation with your environment at the same time that you're listening to yourself very closely to, I was listening to my internal responses to all this beautiful stimuli. Mm -hmm. um, it's really incredible. Yeah, that tuning into yourself and then picking something and then maybe it fits, maybe it doesn't, but when it fits, you know it. Yeah, and I was really coming with, what do I want to give myself? What do I want to bring into my life? Or what's the energy? And I, I imagine that anybody who comes here has a different question that they're mm -hmm. asking when they, they stand in front of this. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, the symbols themselves are alive. They can mean so many things. Mm -hmm. And so we may put it in and have an association with it, but then when it sits in relation to something else, or if it's underneath the sand versus on top of it or on the edge, there's all these relationships that happen and yeah. emotions that come with it. I, yeah. I wanted to break some rules last night <laughs> and I didn't know if, if they were rules or not. <laughs> um, one was that I thought, oh, what if I, don't like something, can I put it back? <laughs> and then, then I had so many things inside the box and I thought, am I allowed to put anything outside the box? <laughs> yes, I should have shared. You know, we, we say the only rules I put the choice away when we're done, mm. that you leave with that image up to Elaine. This is the soul right here. And so we want you to leave with that intact. Yeah. Uh, and then afterward, um, if you don't mind, I spent time with it and just being still and honoring it, um, just feeling very grateful for the experience, being moved personally. Mm -hmm. um, there were several points that just, yeah. And then as a sand play therapist, we're in touch with impermanence because yeah. then there's this amazing moment. We honor it. It was very intense. And then we put it away. And then I um, smooth the sand and it's gone. Mm -hmm. And it's, so it's this over and over again, this experience that this moves. It's a moving and changing constantly, um, the psyche. What strikes me about this incredible connection is how some things may be meaningful to me or appeal me, to me uh, and be comforting and other things are sort of horrifying. Mm -hmm. And I imagine when you're traumatized, mm -hmm. you arrange your life about not feeling stuff. Mm -hmm. So you'll go for the safe things and have little lambs and little things. Mm -hmm. But then you have a nice little symbol like this, huh? yeah. huh? which is a very um. common symbol. Um, I imagine most traumatized people wouldn't choose that. Mm -hmm. because it evokes so many feelings. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder how people actually go there 
to evoke a stimulus. Oh, oh, yeah, so this particular image is as a mother. Yeah. It's extremely evocative. Uh I remember seeing this. And I actually yeah. saw it with my son uh-huh. and got very emotional. Yeah. yeah. And so something like this may or may not appear early in a process. Right. So sometimes somebody who's been traumatized, they cannot help. Like these things come in yeah. anyway, despite themselves. Uh-huh. Uh, in fact, Eric Erickson, did, I like to think yeah. of him as doing the first research in sand play. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And what he did was he did this dramatic productions test. Okay, this was, I think, 1938 or something. And he asked college students just to make a dramatic scene with miniatures, put them on a table. They could not create a scene that did not reflect their own repressed Absolutely. Absolutely. And so he said they couldn't override what was coming forward with whatever the directions were. And so that's what happens is we, we have one thought, but then... We get taken by this. We get carried mm-hmm. by this. Yeah, so even when you think you can avoid it, it keeps coming up anyway. Mm-hmm. But so, but from my, to my mind, still the main issue with trauma is avoidance and getting triggered. Mm-hmm. And so people don't want to get triggered. Like I doubt whether many traumatized people would mm-hmm. choose that particular oh, yeah. Yeah. picture very quickly. Yes. Uh, that's sort of scary mm-hmm. as hell. Mm-hmm. And I wonder at what point the people, person would dare to choose a thing mm-hmm. like that. Like that takes a great deal of courage to really go with mm-hmm. all the things that this picture like that would evoke in people. Mm-hmm. Right? Unless that is how you see yourself. Mm-hmm. It, Maybe it's how you see yourself. Yeah. If, mm-hmm. if that's how you see yourself, it might be a harder thing to give yourself something that's. But you see, as a, as a therapist, you you know you, you may think you're not directive, but you're always sort of pushing people into the edge. Mm-hmm. Like, let's go a little bit deeper than that. What, what brings that up? Huh? But in the way, it sounds like you have much more freedom to turn a blind eye to things. Mm-hmm. For example, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. if somebody were to bring that up early yeah. with trauma, yeah. and maybe it was something that was disturbing in other cultures, this is a, a, an empowering piece for right. some women. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it can evoke different emotions. They may not say a thing about it. Uh-huh. They may put it in a corner. They may bury it. They may uh, surround it by skeletons or flowers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But we don't say, oh, like, you like must this. tell me about it. Like the uh, moment you put that next to it, everything becomes more benign, doesn't it? Something, <laughs> something shifts, yeah. I discovered this last night. It's mm-hmm. interesting that you chose yes. these two <laughs> things. Vessel. Yes, the, the palm trees were very important, huh? Uh-huh. At yeah. the end. Well, they really are neutralizing a lot mm-hmm. of stuff. Actually, a few trees, a little nature, sort of mm-hmm. really makes things much. And this yeah. point is very important, yeah. and yeah. we can watch the psyche in motion. Mm-hmm. And this is mm-hmm. another thing that we get to see: the conflict and defenses come and go. Yeah. So somebody picks this, or they don't. Like you said, yeah. 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 I may right. say I write down if they pick something up and they put it back on the shelf. I take note because yeah. right. it may be months before that comes yeah. in. Like um, I would. Uh, I would not choose that. Yeah. I deliberately chose to put it there. There's an example of something I wouldn't choose. Too much. It has so many associations. For you, interestingly positive. Mm-hmm. For me, all negative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and this is the uniqueness yeah. of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we cannot make assumptions. No. We cannot say, oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's so yeah. nice yeah. what you did. Yeah. We don't make no, any no. judgments. No. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, yeah, it's their symbol. Yeah. Yeah, of course, but I'm curious. Well, let's look at a few more things. Oh, this one. Oh, the grief uh, one. Yeah, like, uh, it's interesting. I chose this one last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Not knowing. On the side of evil. Mm-hmm. Even though the woman is clearly in great grief. Mm-hmm. And then later on, you told me the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe yes. you have to tell that story because it's. Yeah, uh, so uh, this uh, uh, image was made uh, by an artist, Diane Byers. And, and um, when we went through a very difficult loss when we lived in New Mexico, um, the, uh, the story is La Llorona. And she is uh, an individual, you know, she grew up, you know, wanting a you know, vaquero, a fancy, you know, cowboy singing mm-hmm. to her, a handsome man. Uh, but then when she got what she wanted, uh, all looks, 
Um, then he went out on her and drank and, and went out with other women. And eventually he came to her one day to see the children with another woman. Mm. And she lost it. She lost it. And she ended up throwing her own children in the river. And she, the, as the story goes, they drown in the river and she wanders crying, me host, you know, just crying out for her children. What have I done? Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's inconsolable grief. It's like sometimes it's so hard. It's right. not something we can just say, take no, a warm no. bath. And that's what she represents to me, um, that sometimes there's no answer. Yeah. So when she went in there, I could feel this was a moment of, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's interesting, I chose that last night, mm -hmm. and I put her very much in the dangerous corner. Mm -hmm. That maybe it's, it suggested some openness on my part to possibly confront something like mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. I, I some, think uh, in, yeah. in so. your work and our work, yeah. we confront this kind of pain all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it comes up sometimes by complete surprise. Yes. People don't come right. intentionally. Like the, the, the real emotion surges. I call them implicit surges. Yeah. Like you're just moving along and then you get overtaken. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, what really struck me last night is that I put mm -hmm. things there that somehow appealed to me, and then the meaning slowly started to evolve uh, as time went on. And it came out of nowhere, or mm -hmm. it came out of, not out of mm -hmm. my little left yeah. brain. Yeah, right? you kept yeah. saying, this is so right brain, you said. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. You know, and it then, is. And I'm looking at a picture like this. Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it is objectively very sweet. I think for many people, this would be a terrifying picture. Mm -hmm. Can they see it? Oh. Uh, so it's a child uh, in the leaning. symbol of uh, like the hand of God, perhaps. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but it's as objectively as, as comforting as you can hope for. It. And for some people, it may mean making yourself vulnerable or not being able to trust when somebody is nice to you mm -hmm. or. Uh, you know, it can evoke so many things. And so I was really struck that objectively that's a very positive image, but my reaction was not entirely positive to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, indeed, when you do centering, you build up these things that come out of seemingly nowhere. And because that's what trauma is, it comes out of seemingly nowhere that you have this intense reaction. It's something people call it. What's wrong with you? Why, Where did that why, come from? Why, 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 why did you get all freaked out by that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah, these yeah, images yeah. have a positive and negative yeah. charge and yeah. everything in between. Yeah. And so, you know, when you share that, it, the beauty of it is they get to express it, whatever it is. It gets to be seen. And, and it witnessed. doesn't have to be limited. Right. Yeah. It comes, it's no longer repressed, it's no longer ruling, it's out there now. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to say anything about it. And maybe mm -hmm. in time, the relationship shifts. Mm -hmm. Other images may join with it, Yeah, you know, um, but we leave. Yeah, and the joining makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Like oh. you had another. <laughs> like if you join that with that, mm -hmm. it changes. And my suspicion about that decreases. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's beautiful, yeah. Yeah. each of these images, the, yeah. the miniatures have a story of their own, yeah. right? So yeah. I have a relationship. So the, uh -huh. the therapist psyche is all yeah. over this place. Yes. So I have a relationship to right. the image before. With everything. Mm -hmm. ah, sure. And so. Uh, this is an encyclopedia behind Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so, and then all of the ways they've been used, they, they gain these stories. And this is what mm. I'll be talking about at the conference, the idea of these stories uh, in stories in stories. Mm -hmm. And so we can benefit from all of the stories that an image may hold right. Right. from all time. You know, not just our personal story, yeah. uh, but the image can take us back. Oh, and move. Mm -hmm. oh. And that, mm -hmm. See, this picture, for example, that I have all negative associations to, it gets more benign when I say this. Put a little bamboo in there. Yeah. 
Bamboo seems to be, maybe we should do more bamboo in therapy. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, something organic, right. yeah. just something alive, yeah. something that's growing. Have you ever had somebody be afraid of the tableau that they made? Well, some are afraid to touch the sand oh. mm. because of the charge, right? So we think of, you know, the sensory, it's, you know, we play with sand when we're children, if we've been traumatized young. Uh, when I lived in New Mexico, um, I learned that uh, the, the men in Iraq, for example, called it the sandbox. And so it was a charge for them to get into the sand uh, after coming back. Um, and so in time, we, it's always by invitation. So if you'd like to make it, you can. If not, we wait and they sit mm -hmm. and they watch. Mm -hmm. And the act of going in is part of the evolution. Uh, or not, yeah. uh, but most people that come, come for this purpose, so yeah. uh, they do get into the sand, and we watch the sand itself change over time. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying maybe have a strong emotional response to what they see that they've put together. Oh my God. People oh, yeah. think, oh, people think it's so soft. Oh, you're just putting some oh, things no. in the tray, and yeah. then you look at it. Yeah. And yeah. my first ever sand play that I made, uh -huh. I did it in a training, and I thought, you know, you know, that the, the instructor was like, oh, we have this sand here, and everybody just brought miniatures from their house. I mean, this was not a, you know, full-on collection. This was just mm -hmm. examples, and I couldn't stop playing with the sand. And so she said, I need a volunteer, and we'll do it. Well, what I put in there changed everything. Like I mm. saw things I couldn't see, but then I mm. couldn't deny them because they were right there and I made them. Right. And so many therapies, the therapists make suggestions. Uh, and and, and, and yeah, so right, it doesn't right, come right, purely. Right, right, mm. yeah. I couldn't blame the therapist, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? I, I did this, right? right? right. Oh, you couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That happens too, yes, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. so I wonder how often people actually have just lose it and... Um, may wipe things out. It it's very happen. emotional. We've had yeah. kids that, yeah. you know, you have to be, imagine having yeah. somebody who needs to clear a shelf or dump, like they make this and then they have to pour water and dump. Um, and so they do what they need to do. And so we have to be ready. Well, yeah, I, I imagine wow. that a lot of intense somatic responses might come up. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And people freezing maybe sometimes. Like, yeah, and we see yeah. symbols of dissociation. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see things way up on the surface. Mm. We'll see ladders. We'll see balloons. Mm. We'll see uh, helicopters. All of these ways of I can get out of uh, here if uh, I need to. Oh, right. well, very oh, useful. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's good to get a little helicopter in there. Yeah. And so we like that. You know, we let that helicopter be. You oh, know, yeah. because that's their safety. But yeah. you see these images of mm. of the dissociative defenses. You know. Interesting. And it reminds me so much of psychodrama mm -hmm. in that you see a map of your interior in the sand. Um, with with Peso, when there weren't enough people to enact, he would use furniture and items in the mm -hmm. space that they're in. And I've worked with people in person to help them to create a psychodrama in a space. Mm -hmm. And it, this reminds me of that. Yeah. I've done a question. I was so intrigued that you teach in Moscow and in <laughs> Korea, yeah. and, and you're very, right in the shadow of the Kilauea volcano, which erupts from time to time here. Uh, and I've been certainly impressed with how much of us is determined by culture. For example, mm -hmm. I'm a Dutchman by origin, and you would have a very different attitude towards this. Mm -hmm. as your average Dutch uh, foreign mm -hmm. person than if you go up in Rome, let's say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, so I wonder how much, well, it's really different. How is it different to deal with people in Moscow and people in, in Korea? And because what's so intriguing in our field is that in, same, in some ways, trauma is trauma is trauma is trauma, whether you work with Aboriginals in, in Australia or wherever. And, but there's also very difference in cultural expression and cultural digestion. I wonder mm -hmm. if you can say something about that. Yeah. yeah, so it's an honor to see, yeah. you know, so therapists bring their work and yeah. we have groups. So there yeah. usually it's a group of maybe five or six therapists and the therapist brings their work. And so 
in the work, first of all, sometimes it's very difficult to tell the culture of the person by the work, right? So really? a child is a child. So on <laughs> one level, <laughs> it's it's fascinating yeah. to see the universality of the human spirit. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's amazing. And with that said, there's things that are very personal and very mm. unique to that culture. Yeah. And so I ask for stories. Oh, tell me about this character. Um, it's Sand play is always in the context of the person's situation mm -hmm. and their culture. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, the fairy tales that come alive. Um, this morning, uh, you know, we were talking about um, the Nutcracker and the Rat King in the Nutcracker. Oh. And different we were talking about the Nutcracker too. <laughs> in our hotel, we saw beautiful hula dances being danced. And she said, this is so much better than not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell the Russian friends, I won't tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so there are stories we share. And this is what's so beautiful because, you know, the sometimes the owl in one culture is an omen. Yeah. And another culture, it's something that brings good uh -huh. fortune uh -huh. and wisdom. Yeah. Uh, and so we learn the stories. But what, with sample, you're also going to the deepest layer of the psyche, which is the archetypes. Yeah. Yeah. And so we pull these energies that, that Jung calls like psychic instincts. So they're already there. And so as we go from personal to cultural, yeah. all the way to archetypal, we're the same. Mm. We're the same. And um, we may have things that, because of your experience, that get pulled out into your life or yours. Uh, but we go into these archetypes and bring out new energy. So it's like a fishing trip. I like mm -hmm. to think of it. Yeah. You know, I fish and I pull something out. Like, oh, do you want to throw it back? You cannot. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like, so, so we did the Sentry last night, and you know, we're fairly mature and not too disorganized people. Mm -hmm. So we got a fairly organized Sentry. Mm -hmm. you know? But if you're traumatized, you're scared of everything. Uh, you feel always feel threatened. So, so how, how how do you deal with it at the beginning to get people to even be devoted to creating something if you are really primarily interested in defending yourself? Like, you know? Yeah, and so this these defenses are very alive. Yeah. I feel them. I tune in, and I just stay with. So sometimes it's so sparse. It's just. Mm one little thing here and one little thing there and you feel this emptiness and this hesitancy uh -huh. and then next time a little more and a little more uh -huh. and people uh -huh. themselves may see boy, boy my life is empty yeah I mean, and so they're confronted and i'm there for them yeah, yeah. And it's safe that's the main thing whatever comes up is safe um but yes it's um the defenses are there and we don't try to bring the defenses down we let no. them because the defense comes and then the palm tree comes afterwards. So right. Same and they, for the palm tree. Like, <laughs> and then they, <laughs> leave, like, I did that. Yeah, yeah. I was feeling this way and I put the palm uh -huh, tree in. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So nobody does it for them. So they get that right. agency. Right, right. right. Yeah. Mm. I love this palm tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was going to have a, a conversation in the the sand with Bessel's things, but then I, I, and I put this one little thing here and I think, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have just let it be all you. <laughs> no.